Yo, what is going on everyone? Today I have a treat of a video for you. I'm extremely excited because we are supposed to be outside, but right now, as you guys have seen by some of the clips, it's raining and it started raining even harder. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's pretty crazy how hard it's raining right now in Denver. But that is not gonna stop your boy from creating the best video as he possibly can. Today we are out on Broadway Street. If you guys don't know Broadway, it's one of the kind of major streets in Colorado and Denver. I know a lot of other states and cities in the US have a Broadway, but ours is more of like a corridor slash transportation hub. It was initially built for like bringing in different produce and bringing in different food from, you know, outside the city to inside the city. And so hopefully I'll give you guys some shots of the city. It's raining extremely hard, like I said right now, which is, Usually it doesn't rain too much in Denver. Usually it's like a dry, desert, mountainous kind of state. But it, we need the rain, so I'm not, I'm not mad at the rain at all. But in 2021, Broadway is predominantly a kind of street that has a whole bunch of shops. Whether it be vintage shops or just kind of antique shops. Today we're going to a shop that I'm super, super excited about. And it's kind of one of the streets in Denver that has a little bit more items and things that are a little bit more up my alley if that makes a lot of sense and today's store in question is actually la lovely vintage it is just literally right behind me over there i'm trying to wait to see if the rain will die down at all if it doesn't die down then i'm just gonna have to go in and do whatever i need to do while it's raining um, but hopefully maybe it dies down a little bit so i can show you guys the, the different parts of of this street if it, if it doesn't die down, I can always just use my phone and record it on my phone. So it doesn't look like the rain's gonna stop anytime soon. It says the rain on my phone. It says stopping in 55 minutes. So might as well go in there, shoot the shop, you know, do the things I need to do. Pack this camera away though, because I don't want it to get wet. It's gonna be, take water damage. So we made it to La Lovely Vintage, one of the kind of more aesthetically pleasing vintage stores here in Denver. I think it's a prerequisite to any vintage store that you had to, you gotta have some good vibes up in here in order to be a, a noteworthy store. Um, I actually come to this store, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned before, because of one of my international friends, Hugo. He mentioned this store to me because of their denim. And he was like, have you ever been to La Lovely? And I was like, no, I've never been. He told me about it. We came earlier this summer and now i have an opportunity to showcase the storefront so i'm gonna do my justice to kind of show you guys what it's like in here the items that they have different from vintage americana to jeans to candles to everything in between to just the ambiance of this entire place is just unbelievable so i can't wait to show you guys what they have in store i don't know i don't even know where i want to start but let's let's get into the video <laughs> So this section behind me has a plethora of different vintage tees, whether they be graphic tees or kind of like collegiate tees. Um, this one kind of stood out to me. It's like a German beer house crew neck, size extra large, looks a little bit small, probably a little bit, you know, used and worn in over time. Um, it just says vintage. So, but anyways, I actually really, really enjoy and love this type of graphic on like 
crew necks and tees like this to me is like oh, I don't know it does something to me it, it hits a little different <laughs> job listing type thing like on the story they were like yo right. we're hiring but i just walked in and was selling stuff and we were just kind of you know bullshitting more or less but yeah <laughs> now nah, tara was just kind of like you just want a job and it was like pretty much like that like i don't think i turned in an application or anything right, right, it was just right. like you know i you find know. that to be like very common with like different shops like this where typically what you'll find is that people like it's all like relationship based like it's exactly. very like yeah. spur of the moment like Oh, you like this? Okay, yeah, you like this. So you want to work here? Okay. Exactly. So it's kind of fun to, to have it like that. Realistically, you know, I love everything that we got in here, but like the stuff that I collect, stuff that I like, you know, if I see in here, I'm just going to rip it off the wall and bring home. Yeah, Especially exactly. like the weirder design pieces and stuff. You know, okay. the shit that like, you know, I mean, I don't know. I love Levi's jackets and stuff, but if I find like a denim jacket where there's like, you know, a pocket on the side or like right. you know, some weird asymmetrical stuff. Something like, really different. Exactly. Because yeah. that's like really, I think, where a lot of the beauty comes from in the old clothes is there was just like, you know, it wasn't just like you go to a store and it's just like 10 of the same jackets or something. It's right. like, Right, no, there's like right. so many brands making stuff, so much discrepancies between each brand. It's right. like, I don't know, I mean, I, I fiend for the stuff. But also, yeah, of course, the band tees and stuff. Like, personally, yeah, I feel like everybody needs at least like five or six black band tees in their closet at all definitely, times. Definitely, definitely. As far as me, I'm- At least. To, yeah, no, for sure. I, mean, I got- oh, but thanks, thank you so much yeah, for, uh, for chopping it up. I, I always appreciate talking to the individuals within the store no, sure. because you, you know like how do you get a feel for the heart exactly so um, i'm gonna show you guys a couple more things of course All right, are you ready? Interviews, interviews, <laughs> interviews. So I started right out of college. I was like 21 when I started selling. Um, it was my own personal collection. It was what I had gathered through the years of thrifting growing up. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of kids these days. Yeah, course, <laughs> thrifting course. wasn't nearly as cool though when I was doing it. It was kind of embarrassing actually to be like the only person going to school in used clothes yeah. at the time. So I started with my collection um, on Etsy but really quickly really wanted the presence and community so I got a 1957 Shasta trailer and I opened my first store in there. I took that all around Denver to the Denver Flea and the horseshoe market, all the markets that were around and did that like day in and day out. Every Friday I was popped up at Corvus Coffee down on Broadway. So yeah, that was like my, that was my start. You know, one of the things I read early on on your Instagram page and kind of understand through being in the store for the last 20, 30 minutes is you guys love old like you guys have been saying so talk to me yeah. about like what you carry here in the store the same like mostly utilitarian utilitarian it's something that's going to be used over and over again it's almost like i think they're calling it like capsule wardrobe mm -hmm. where it's like you have like your special pieces it's something that you're gonna wear a couple times a week we love t-shirts we love jeans we love sweatshirts anything that's like it's in your capsule collection right, um, totally. it's not that one and done wear or that you know like the dresses that you we love vintage dresses but sometimes you buy it for a wedding and then it's in your closet and never gets seen again mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. want you to have that pair of jeans that's like you're picking every day definitely definitely so. last question is your personal style how would you describe yeah. it uh, very casual yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um jeans and t-shirt person 100 percent usually white t-shirt <laughs> if if not a band tee um i'll change it up and do a sweatshirt when it's cold <laughs> it's starting to get a little bit colder. It falls around the corner. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, no, I mean, it is. I've had the same wardrobe, I think, since like seventh grade. I'm very <laughs> much a jeans and t shirt person. I'll dress up every once in a while for an occasion, but classic casual. Yeah, love it. Love it. Thanks so much. Yeah, for thank you. Great. Thank <sighs> you. So this is what typically happens in Denver. It rains for about 10, 20 minutes. 
and then afterwards it stops raining and it's beautiful outside again and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more of Broadway just to see kind of what the ambiance is like it's a very interesting part of the city and you know it's just one of the more character kind of places in the city one of the places that has a little bit more character to it so I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like a little bit Back where we started kind of the beginning of this video, back in my car, <laughs> La Lovely Vintage was fantastic. Dudley and Tara were absolutely great. Loved hearing both of their perspectives on fashion in the city of Denver, their love for vintage, and definitely a place I recommend anyone going to if they're in the city of Colorado or the city of Colorado, oh my goodness. Why did I say that? In the city of Denver, Broadway is a really interesting and fun place in Denver that has a lot of different shops. You know from 10 penny which i showed earlier in different videos to a ton of different other shops so if you're in denver come to la lovely now in this second half of the video let's get back to the studio let me show you guys this month's pickups the pickups that i received from august and september let's get going Man, I love pickups videos. <laughs> Maybe you skip to this point in the video, in which case, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Drew What It Do, and if you've been watching since the very beginning, what's up, squad? Let's get a couple of fist bumps in. You know how we do. Here's one for the one time. I appreciate you for watching the full length of the video. I put a lot of work into it, so shout out to you. Before we dive into arguably what I consider to be one of the best pickups videos that I've ever done, I want to put out a disclaimer about overconsumption and just consuming fashion at a super high level. As a content creator, I have an obligation and an opportunity to create content on the internet. I feel very privileged to do so. If I wasn't in this position, there's no way I'd be consuming to the level I am. And I want to put that out there for those of you who are looking at this and thinking, I need to get all these things. I need to acquire all these items. When in reality, you only need a certain, a small amount of items that will make your wardrobe stand out that'll provide value to you and will give you great fits for months and, and years to come, right? So I just wanna put that out there. Overconsumption is something that I think about all the time as I'm kind of creating content. Though I wanna show you guys different brands, I wanna show you guys smaller brands, I wanna show you guys new creatives. It is an opportunity for me to do those things on the internet through YouTube, but at the same time, I am in a pretty peculiar situation, so don't try to emulate exactly what I do 100% if that makes sense. Just be a mindful consumer, that's all I'm saying. Anyways, let's jump into today's video. All of the items I mentioned will be in the description. I will also have timestamps to showcase each item if you wanna skip around and just go to the item that you're more curious about, because I'm gonna be showing you guys some things that are unreleased, or not talked about often, and or are from smaller brands, and my personal interests. This is gonna be a really, really fun one. I'm very, very excited. So starting out the video, I wanna show you guys something I picked up in New York, and it is this Kith napkin. Um, really, really high quality napkin from Kith when I was there in the city, and I had a great time. <laughs> Imagine if this was real. I literally brought back these napkins from Kith just to troll you guys. But imagine, imagine if someone was like, yeah, um, let me show you guys these napkins I picked up from Kith. Uh, it was a great experience. Kith treats, check it out. <laughs> First, what I want to show you guys is what I typically do is I showcase different items that I've made with my brand. So for those of you who don't know, I have my very own lifestyle brand called Edward Joyner. And we just came out with these organic cotton tote bags. They are an eight ounce organic cotton with about a 20 inch handle on the top so you can easily put it over your shoulder. There's a water-based screen print on the screen print on the front, excuse me. And I just love tote bags. If you guys, you know, if you make fun of tote bag boys, you're kind of making fun of me because I'm, I'm a huge tote bag dude. I love wearing tote bags and you know, they're just a nice functionality. I have a whole bunch of clothing in them actually because I was doing a project with a brand. On the back, it says Denver, Colorado. I was about to say Drew, I was about to say Drew Joyner, but it says Denver, Colorado circa 2021. And then on the front, it says for daily use, which is meant to be as a reminder. So this bag is to 
remind you to continuously use items that have longevity to reuse the items that you own just to be more sustainable. A huge component to my brand is sustainability and pushing people to think about product in a more kind of conscious and sustainable manner. These tote bags are $40 and we're very proud of them. Like I'm super proud. I've been using them nonstop. And we ship internationally, we ship domestically for free internationally. We do have to charge a little bit because they be taxing when it comes to shipping when you, when you ship something out of the US. And like I said, I absolutely love our tote bags. I wanna say thank you to everyone who's ordered one so far. We've had quite a few orders and I'm very appreciative. Hopefully we can get it to sell out within the next couple of weeks. And if you can help make that possible, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and I know a lot of people keep asking me about our trucker hats which will come back out spring of 2022 because a lot of people really really want more of these trucker hats so i will be remaking these i mean we have more items that we're planning to slate to release in fall winter so i'm very excited about those we're doing different headwear for the fall and the winter besides a trucker hat but we'll bring these back out because these are actually pretty dope in my opinion as well and people people seem to want these see if i can get this to stay this is the moment of truth if i can get this to stay Okay, cool. Next, let's look at the pile to the left of me, right? So this is where all of the items are. I'm gonna have to take some things down from the pile in order to actually do what I wanna do first. So I'm extremely, extremely excited to start off the footwear section of this video with a pair of shoes that are unreleased by one of my favorite brands, actually two of my favorite brands, one of them being Jound and the other one being New Balance. And if you haven't already guessed it, these are the JJJ New Balance 990 V4s, unreleased pair. Finally, you know, it's kind of a dream come true for me to be able to work with a brand like Jound or for them to kind of seed me some, some items. This is the shoe, right? These are the Jound 990 V4s. They have a kind of blackish, bluish, purplish upper when you have the suede and the mesh overlays or underlays, excuse me. You have typical 990 V4 big in on the inside is where you also have the other jound hit as you can see right there. Beautiful, simplistic, clean, very jound-esque is what you get with this shoe right here. And if you don't know, the reason why the 990 V4 is one of my favorite shoes is because of the fact that it's durable for one, like incredibly durable. I've, I've taken mine to Europe, I've taken mine on hikes, I've taken mine through cities, and I've had them for the last two years and they still look really, really beautiful. That's what I love about them. And then you have the fact that the, the 990 V4s, this pair in particular, and I think all of the pairs, the majority of the pairs are made in the US. So the quality of the craftsmanship is there. Like I said, you have like a black midsole, bluish, purplish, uh, kind of dark, dark gray or blackish colorway it's kind of hard to describe it with these i always go true to size some people say that you should size down when it comes to made in usa shoes but i go true to size and then i just lace my shoes up pretty tight and that's what i do with these but one of the cooler parts about this shoe also is the fact that they included these they're like a elastic rope lace lock and they have a jound see if we can get to focus they have like a jound watermark right there and then, then the way you lace these up, I've seen it on Instagram already by someone else. I'm not actually an expert at lacing, lacing up something like this, but they're just like lace locks that you put these through the lace and then you can lace lock the shoe in a different fashion than your typical regular 990 V4. And it kind of makes me think, well, are they marketing this shoe as more of like a more technical or outdoors kind of shoe when it comes to the marketing that they're gonna do for it? All I know is I'm excited to have picked it up, got it early, and I can show you guys what it looks like. So for me, I go true to size when it comes to my 990 V4 sizing. I've had and worn my 990 V4s to the ground almost with my gray pair. And these fit exactly like those, which I love. The consistency on that fit is really, really on point for me. And the way I probably will be styling these is a very kind of like jound-esque kind of way, a monochromatic outfit, a lot of sweat, a lot of just simplistic bottoms with these and just have the, the shoe be a little bit under the radar, right? Cause that's kind of what jound is. It's like, it's like a, if you know, you know kind of brand. And these are very, very quaint in my opinion. I can't wait to wear these around in the fall. They won't get too dirty cause they, they got a, they're black and they're pretty much dark blue or, or you know, dark gray and they're beautiful. I absolutely love these shoes, absolutely love these shoes. Let me know what you think about these. Are you excited about these? Do you not like these because of the fact you don't like Jound maybe? Or are you excited about these, waiting for these to come out? I'm very, very happy that I was able to show you guys these shoes because 
man, I love me some John sneakers. It's not even, these are not even the only Johns I picked up in this video because I have other ones that I picked up as well. And so I think what Justin and the team up there in the, the Montreal studio are doing, impeccable. Very, very inspiring and I, I enjoy it. I don't know, it's something I gravitate to. So staying on topic as in regards to John, I also picked up the Reebok Club C's in the original colorway with Jound and then the classic nylons as well that I had earlier in 2020. And the reason why I decided to pick up both of these is because my dude, Jared, I forget his last name, but I'll have his Instagram on the screen. He hit me up and he was like, I can, you know, get a deal for a really good price on both of these. I was able to acquire both of them. I was able to get the classic nylons back, which I think are some of the most underrated kind of shoes that you can have. And I've talked about them a lot on like TikTok, for example, because I think that people are kind of sleeping on these and you don't necessarily need to get the down pair to get the value out of a shoe like this. And I love these with the Club C's, absolutely classic style of shoe. Can't go wrong with a Club C. His are a little bit like broken in, so the, the leather feels really kind of soft on these. And I feel like the John pair of leather is just nicer in general. But overall, it's a pretty, I clean these up a little bit, so they're pretty, they're pretty clean if you ask me. Um, especially these ones, like there's no like crazy dirt or markings on it as for a used pair of shoes. And so, went with a size 11 for both of these. The Club C's in this colorway has been something that I've kind of always wanted ever since I remember I think Ray Mia Ray did a video about Jown and had his pair and I was like man those are so sweet and the resale prices were just crazy on these but now I think they've come down a little bit well I don't know if they really come down but I just remember seeing these and wanting them so bad like just a few years ago and it was just uh it's great to have them in hand so once again with jound and both of these what you'll find is that you can really pair and match these shoes with a plethora of different outfit options whether you're dressing them up dressing them down going to the grocery store hanging out with friends or doing whatever during the fall season and i won't be afraid to beat these up while when it snows here in colorado so i'm very excited about that just a just a great great shoe always love what jound does I call it, call it the, the quadruple J, four J's, the brand with the four J's. <laughs> if they want to market that as like a marketing campaign, you, they go ahead, I mean, uh, you can use it. Write, write my check, the brand with the four J's, like, okay, if you want to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's a joke. Love these shoes though, and went true to size on both of them, and uh, I think you should as well. Next up, we have a shoe from my man, Jonathan Rodriguez, uh, who is a fa the founder of the brand Obra or creator of the brand Obra, and he runs the brand and its main purpose is to kind of recreate some of these um, Nike shoes that you typically see that are really popular right now, whether they be Jordan ones or dunks. And for me, like the bootleg scene is much, much more exciting to me <laughs> when it comes to dunks and Jordans than the actual dunks and Jordans. And so I had Jay on the podcast and I wanted to support him after hearing his story. He is, uh, I think he was born in New Mexico or he's from New Mexico. So these are actually a homage to New Mexico. We got 505, which I believe is the area code. Obra Market right there. These are gonna be really, really something that not a lot of people know about or see. This is as close as your boy is ever gonna get to a dunk. So, you know, cherish it while we're here. <laughs> Take a look at these Obra 505s. Boom. These are the shoes right here. Very, very beautiful. And I think these are perfect for the fall time. They're like a mustardy. They're, they're perfect for fall or summer, I feel like. They kind of are in between that color. So you have representing the Obra on the side right here, which is this kind of fall swoosh. You have 505 on the tongue, as you can see right there. The outsole is in your dunk low fashion. On the insole, it says Obra Market in there, which is super clean. And what makes this shoe really, really crazy is that there's actually a double layer of fabric all around this. So if you kind of rub this off or tear it off or use sandpaper or shred it off in some way, or if you're skating or whatever, it reveals the second layer of the shoe, which is red. And I know Nike's done that with other shoes, but this, for someone who's an independent creator, to be able to create something like this and have that as a marking for the shoe, and I'll make sure to have that on the screen, or I should have had it on the screen, to have that as something that is a part of a feature of a shoe is incredible. 
Let me get let me show you guys the other pair. This is what they look like together. So you have these right here. Oh man, I'm looking at them in the in the lens binder. These are insane, brother. These are crazy. And then I already know I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna swap out for the blue laces because I feel like the blue laces are gonna go dumb. I have not tried these on yet, so uh, let, let's see how they fit on feet. Um, for me, I'll tell you guys this. For me, like I said, I've never really bought into dunks ever, really. And obviously, we're in a moment of dunks, and I've kind of talked about the overhyped nature of dunks and you know how people really f are flocking to them. And like I said, this is as close as I'm gonna get because I, I did want to kind of support Jay and then and to pretend as though I'm some kind of like amazing skater or anything like that. Your boy does not skate anymore. He tried it. He did try it as a kid. He tried it, but my passion became hooping and taking the ball to the cup and laying it in so but this is this is a very fun fun sneaker that once again not many people are going to know about or have and it's a, one of those if you know you know so let's get these on feet yep so as you can see i have them on right now and size 11 is perfect thank you so much jay bro you, you're doing a fantastic job with these bootlegs he's got like a, a mars yard bootleg that i also picked up that i'll be showcasing in a future pickups video and i absolutely love i just love bootlegs something about them that makes me want them more than the actual brand because at least i know that the the bootleg whoever you know who, whenever i support a bootleg the the money that i spend that goes into supporting a, someone who's you know trying to be very very creative and trying to be out of the norm where a lot of times with the actual shoes there's just so much hype around them and being able to kind of commodify or being able to actually make the shoe accessible for retail with a little bit of a twist on it for a little bit of a personal storytelling on it is just unreal that's why i love bootlegs and the quality is, is great on these these feel really really good on feet i'll definitely be switching out the laces and very excited to have these I, it's kind of weird for me to look down and have this dunk on my foot <laughs> i literally have them <laughs> on my foot right now it's kind of it's kind of crazy but uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun wearing these shout out to the man jonathan rodriguez check out the podcast too if you haven't already a little plug all right last for the footwear we're gonna be looking at a very very sustainable brand the Saye brand which I actually end up working with on creating a few TikToks for and I feel very very blessed to have the opportunity to do so and I reached out to them in order to actually do the work so this is something that I really wanted to showcase for you guys and it's a vegan sneaker right and what makes this sneaker cool and this is what it looks like Let's see if I can get the lighting to adjust and it kind of reminds me of oops it kind of reminds me of a club C in the fact that it has like that shape to it this is their Modelo 89 vegan grease sneak sneaker in grease or gris in Spanish. I'm not saying it correctly, I know, but it just means gray. So you have that kind of gray piping throughout and then you have the gray on the back. It says Saye. But this is a brand, I believe, out of either Spain or Portugal. If I'm, if I'm mistaken, so let me write down in the comment section. I think it's out of either one of those two places. And let me talk to you guys about materials a little bit because I think it's incredible what materials they have to offer. I haven't written down. I just can't memorize things like that. Some of the key materials used for these sneakers are the corn vegan leather upper, which comprises the majority of the upper of the shoe. You have bamboo lining, you have organic cotton on the laces, and you have like this synthetic rubber outsole, midsole that comprises it. And one of the first impressions I get with this shoe is how light it is for one and how narrow it is. It's very interesting how narrow it is. Uh, I've worn these before and I've kind of put them on ice for the one time I wore them to show you guys what I really think about them. The shoes are, are really cool. I think from an aesthetic standpoint, they nailed. I love cream midsoles. Um, I love gray with cream. And then it just matches everything. Like this shoe is just very, very versatile. And then you have the crate, the, I'm gonna say the crame, <laughs> the, the, the cream, cream laces. <laughs> but on feet, these have a really interesting feel. I went with my true size, which is like EU 44, which converts to a US 11 or 10 and a half, 11 ish. And on feet, these kind of are really, really interesting. They have a very narrow look from top down, which definitely makes them look less like the club C when I have them on. When I'm just holding them and looking at them, they have a more club C look. And then the kind of outsole or the insole, excuse me, the comfort of the shoe, I feel like is a little bit lacking, but I've but I do think that they told me that they're working on better technology as it relates to the insole. I would give it a probably um, a C plus or a B, not something that's like uncomfortable, but like you can definitely feel 
the grooves of the outsole and just how maybe there could be a little bit more padding there if, if they were to add more padding, that'd be great. It's just a suggestion. It's just something that for Saye to improve upon. And one of the things with brands is that no brand is perfect, right? Like no brand creates the perfect product. And as a consumer and as a customer, like I think it's important for us to talk about some of the things that we feel like can be improved upon. And for these, I think the comfort of the shoe is one of those things. But other than that, like the material composition of this shoe and just the overall flavor of the shoe, banger. Once again, kind of like the Club C's, goes with everything, has that gray coloration, and it's just beautiful if you're asking me. So I went true to size. These are very narrow. So if you're a wide footer, maybe I'd recommend going up a size if you're curious about these. They are linked down below. And just another way to support another dope brand doing dope things out of Europe. And I love kind of connecting with different European brands because I love talking to the, the folks from across the pond. That's just how I get down. And hopefully I can go back to Europe one of these days and meet a whole bunch of people there. That'd be sick. Oh yeah, one more thing about Saye is they actually have these cards that if you plant these, they will grow tomatoes, I believe, which is crazy. And I actually have a tomato plant that I'm already growing, which is really, it's really, really big. And tomatoes are pretty easy to grow. So if you plant these in the ground, Water them, nurture them, plant them in soil, they'll grow. What's that Drake line? They threw me in the dirt and I turned it to soil and grew or something like that. <laughs> so let's talk about uppers, hats, and tops really quick. So last month, as the recording of this video, I went to New York City and I had a great time with Lauren. And while we were there, we were able to meet up with quite a few people, a couple people, not that many, honestly three people. One was Adrian, who's always been one of my favorite dudes to connect with. He, uh, he, he helped write articles for my brand, Edward Joyner. Then we met Ray Mia and Devante Ivory, who are two you know, black fashion owners, fashion brand owners who have their own brands respectively. Ray runs and operates uh, Ore NYC and Devante Ivory operates Soy Blondie. And the first item I wanna show you guys is the one I'm wearing right now. It is this cropped knit sweater from Ray's brand Ore. As you can see, it says Manhattan Art Studio. One of my favorite pieces from Ray because of the fact that it has very, very kind of Ray detailing. The green on, on the knit is very Ray. You know, you know, Ray loves his green for the love of Olive. You know, give it a shout out, give it a, give it a follow, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and what I think Ray's been able to really do is expand and grow his brand using this Manhattan Art Studio graphic. So to see him kind of continue to be innovative in regards to this graphic and this design. Very, very awesome to see that he was gracious enough to give this to me. Thank you, sir. And it was a lot of fun actually meeting Ray and talking to him. I talk about it on my podcast a little bit as well. And just meeting Devante, being in New York and feeling that energy in New York, it's really, really palpable. And so I definitely will be spending more time there and hopefully, you know, Ray and I and Alex Walker can revamp and kind of redo and, and make sure we get done with the magazine we said we were gonna do, which was Small Hours Mag and that's still in the production. We're kind of, you know, working out the kinks for it and tweaking a little bit. So anyways, this is the first item. It is the knit cropped sweater. I can't remember the actual name of it, Ray. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You got the contrast stitching. You got all the details. You got very, very long sleeves on it. Love this, man. Thank you. Next hanging up, I actually have the trifecta is like was what I'm calling it. I have the three hats. We got Devonte Ivory's hat. We got your boy's hat, inner matrix hat. And then Ray, Looked it up with the Ore trapped in a world we never made. Ore hat, trucker hat, and truckers have been pretty, pretty, pretty popular this year, as you guys can probably tell already. Um, but this hat is in insane. You have the puff print, the Ore puff print. Love the graphic or just the kind of iconography, the, the typography. That's what it's called. The typography of this hat has a great fit to it. You have an inner Ore tag right here as well that looks great on it. And this is the hat that, you know, Ray did a great job on. I know this sold out really, really quickly because of, you know, just the, the, the quality of this product. He does a great job with things like this. Last but not least, I'm kind of an Ore boy at this point. <laughs> Last but not least, I picked up, or he was gracious enough to give me this bracelet, which says Ore NYC on it. It's like a friendship bracelet type beat. 
Um, I'll make sure to show you guys some good B-roll of it because it's a little bit tough right now. This is a, a really, really nice bracelet. These are unreleased as well. I'm not sure the exact detailing of the bracelet, but what I can tell you is that one, I love it. I'm not a big jewelry person. I've been wearing it all the time. So you know, I really like it in that case. And two, the quality is really, really there. Very, very strong metals on here. And I have a small wrist and it fits kind of perfectly. Like I really like the way it kind of moves on my wrist. While we're on the topic of things that I'm just wearing, let's talk about this Ebbets Flannel Field or Ebbets Field Flannel New York hat. This is a Brooklyn Eagles hat that if you guys saw my last reels or TikTok, I talked about how I kind of Saw this hat when I was on my flight to New York and I was like, this is sick. And then the fact that it was a part of the uh, a Negro Baseball League made me want it even more. I got the adjustable version. You have the satin underneath the hat. You have the wool of the hat. Made in USA. Ebbets does a really, really good job in terms of like the their quality of their hats. The shape is there. Super dope in my opinion. Super dope. Not your typical New York fitted. A lot of people love New York fitteds. And for me, this is like a deviation of that. And I always love, I always love a little deviation. If you know me, just like with bootlegs, just like with offshoots, anything that's like a deviation, but like a re-representation with a little bit of history, a little bit of nuance to it, I eat that up because I just love that. So as you guys know, I've been wearing this hat this entire video. Very, very dope hat. Love this hat. Okay, next up, I'm so excited to show you guys this. This package has been in the weights for about two, three months, June, July, August, September, like three, three and a half months. And it is the Tyler, the creator, call me if you get lost t-shirts. I've been waiting way too long for this, Tyler. What's up, bro? What's up? What's up, Igor? So these are the posters. These are folded into like a million, like, I guess I can show you guys. So I, Saw that Tyler had some merch for his new album, Call Me If You Get Lost. And me being someone who's always been a fan of Tyler and always loved his music, but most of, even more than that, I think Tyler's just creativity and his ability to, this is the poster, very, very thin, very cheap to be honest, but what, what can I say? It just, it was free with the shirts. But what I think that Tyler brings to the table different from like other rappers or musicians merchandise is that I think it just, there's some kind of energy about it that I like it more than just like a Drake merch or a Kanye merch, at least at this point in my life. And I hopefully plan to go to the concert when it's in Denver. So it looks like this one was not in the bag. So I got a white shirt, which right here has the driver's license right there on it and call me if you get lost on the tag. And then it has call me if you get lost on the back. I didn't know this was, I didn't know this was a thing. This is kind of cool. Very simple, white tees. You know me and my white tees, love them. And then I got a cream one. I should have got brown, I should have got brown. There was a brown one, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Um, let's get this open. Hopefully my audio is not messing up. Ooh, this cream one feels a way softer than the, than the white one. So this is the exact same, oh no, it's not the exact same. It says, call me if you get lost on the front. And then it has the license plate on the back. And that is sick. I don't know which one I like more. I like both of them. These are beautiful tees. Big Tyler fan, you guys know that I did a whole homage to Tyler when I was talking about the Doc Martin Adrian loafers, if you saw, and just love his music for one, one of the best albums of the year so far, and just love his creativity. So I think I got both of these in a size large for reference, and I don't know if you can still pick these up. I don't know if people are reselling these. I'm definitely gonna keep them. But if you have an opportunity to go to his album, or go to his, uh, excuse me, not go to his album, go to his concerts, I guarantee you'll have these shirts there if you, um, you know, pay the price of admission, wait in line during the concert, miss the concert, but you, at least you can get a t-shirt. At least you can get a t-shirt. You miss the concert, 
but at least you get a t-shirt. <laughs> so real quick, I wanna show you guys another shirt that I picked up in New York, and it is this Nintendo New York shirt. If you guys watched the beginning of this video, then you'll know I am a big fan of video games and Nintendo. So this is a super soft shirt. I went to the Nintendo New York store and I was geeking out about Mario and all the characters in Nintendo. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed, man. I love what I love, man. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is a nice shirt. I don't really wanna talk about it too much because you guys probably don't care, but in the slight chance you do, shirt is soft, size large, Let's keep it moving. Let's talk about two independent brands that I have been supporting and kind of been watching. One, the first one is DeVinis and my dude MD made these denim bucket hats. And DeVinis is another kind of New York based brand. And you know, this is something I feel like Lauren really, really would like. She, she's the one who kind of, when I first got this, she was like, oh my gosh, this would be really cool to have. Um, I didn't get it for her, we'll probably share it, but on the front, it says De Venice, which is, I can't remember exactly what MD said, dead language, it might be Latin, it might be Latin. And then you have the inner tag right here. Just a nice, cool, little, simple bucket hat that's denim, something that just, bucket hats add a little bit of extra to your wardrobe, in my or to your outfit, in my opinion, if you can style it the right way. Wanted to support him. This product was not overly expensive and it's always great to support people that who are trying to make it happen for themselves. And so if you guys want to check out the Venice, they do a lot of cool graphics. This is one of their more subdued items. As you know, I'm more of a subdued kind of guy, but the Venice, New York, he's out of Queens as well. So shout out Queens. Next, we're, let's talk about another Canadian brand that is kind of jound esque and it is Kaza's or, or K yeah, Kaza. I think his name is Kaza's. His brand Realm Omp and it is a kind of minimalistic brand and he was kind enough to send over this hoodie for me and i've i've had other products from realm ohm and what he does is creates high quality garments or high quality clothing simplistic and like i said very jound esque if you ask me right so that's kind of his logo right there you have ohm on the front with this very chocolatey brown hoodie and brown is just great for the fall like it's very heavyweight very nice heavyweight and then you have the same kind of design piece right there on the sleeve if we can get the thing to focus boom just like that so really really cool support people like this man this dude has his brand has less than 500 followers i believe on instagram He's trying to make it happen for himself. He's trying to, he's trying to do it big. And he just has a, I don't know, I like it because he kind of reminds me of Jown, so I'm always gonna like something like that. Let's see, what size is this again, my brother? So this is a size medium, right? And hopefully I'll have Mans on the podcast because he had requested, you know, he wanted to talk about his brand. Now hopefully I can have him on the podcast, talk about his experiences, where his design inspiration comes from and just his passion and whatnot. I know that he has a lot of love for clothing. He's been doing it for over a year, I believe just a little bit over a year and if you do something for over a year and you're trying and you're you're putting all your effort into it and you're seeing you know sometimes minimal growth it can be just discouraging but i want you to know bro that you know continue doing what you're doing continue to strive for the best you possibly can for your brand and that goes for anybody who's trying to make it within fashion you know i say no to a lot of people and i know i do i say no to a lot of people and i know it can be sometimes discouraging but don't let it discourage you there are tons and tons of you know opportunities to partner with different creators you know who are other than me or who maybe will be me in the future just don't lose hope continue to work towards what you want to work towards and continue to strive for the best version of your brand that's what i do with my brand edward joiner as you guys saw literally with the tote bags that's what i try to do and that's what you should do as well so never lose hope never lose hope so next smaller brand is out in California and it is Mawa. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And Mawa is a brand that I've seen oftentimes and they kind of have this butterfly insignia that they typically use to market and denote the brand. Getting some dust on this or something like that. The founder hit me up, hit me up, excuse me, and was kind enough to, you know, once again, uh, allow me to kind of showcase or allow me to kind of test out their hat. This is another hat company, another small brand. I think out of Los Angeles or maybe LA County, trying to do their thing, making it happen. 
brand that I've known about, supported. I wanted to get them on the podcast as well early on, but I think it just kind of fell through. Super dope hat, clean, crisp. The shape of it is really nice. You have the butterfly embroidery on the side right there. P, excuse me. And yeah, super clean. There's not a lot to say about it. Just very clean, very good. Small brand trying to make it happen for themselves, which is always really, really sweet. We made it to the point in the pickups video where one, my voice is getting tired, and two, we have some of the more kind of personalized, interesting items that I can't wait to show you guys. If you watch this section all the way to the post vid vid, you will really get an idea for who I am as an individual, right? Like my personal interests. Obviously I love fashion, but you'll get an idea of like how other ways I entertain myself, right? So starting off with one of the brand one of the brands that gifted me was Hydroflora and they gifted me this super cool this is this is not a uh, a 990 v4 right this is let me get my lens cap so you guys can hear this this is made completely out of cement <laughs> and so this is a cement mold of a 990 v4 in which you're supposed to put like a succulent in the shoe which is super cool. So Hydroflora sent this to me and they like, it's like a custom piece kind of thing um, where they wanted to showcase these off. Super cool brand. Like how many brands are doing things like this? This is a super innovative. One of the coolest features about this too is that just the, the level of detail. Like I'll make sure to get some B-roll, but it literally has the same level of detail. I wonder if they just took a actual 990 V4 and just drenched it in. <laughs> no, that probably didn't work wouldn't work just drenched it in cement but no really cool I can't wait to kind of set this up I'm not sure where to set it up yet but I definitely am gonna put some like plants in here because I do love plants and I do love kind of greenery and things like that and they have other shoes too they have Jordans and Nikes and things like that they knew I was a New Balance boy so they sent over the New Balance this is really cool it's super heavy like I could work out to this like seriously but yeah this don't fit your boy's feet this is way too small for my foot and uh, when I showed Lauren this, she was like, whoa, did you give me some shoes? I was like, nah, boo, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next up, we have pretty much all books or manga and whatnot. And the first book I picked up, picked up in New York, which I'm very, very excited about is a, I think it's a 1960s reprint of Peanuts, but I think it was printed in the 70s. So it's a reprint of from the 60s in the 70s. And if you guys don't know, you know, one of the classic American strips, you know, you have Charlie Brown and the gang pretty much. I forget everyone's name, honestly, but something I wanted to look through just cause like, I don't know, I've never, I've always like watched the Charlie Brown series and things like that, like during Thanksgiving and Christmas time and, and the holidays and things like that. So uh, it's gonna be really fun. I haven't yet to open this up yet. I'm not gonna open it up yet, but this is cool. Excited to pick this up. And that's the thing, places like New York have shops like this where I feel like in Denver, it's a little few and far between. Next up, manga that I picked up, super excited about. You guys probably saw Death Note. Let me get all the other Death Notes. I picked up all of, all of the black editions because for one, the books are really cool looking. <laughs> and for two, I think it's about time I take a look at Death Note. If you guys know manga or anime, this is one of, I feel like, uh, a relatively classic or really good series that has been kind of popular in the last couple of years. And it's essentially my understanding, I have not read it yet, so my understanding is it's about, you know, a kid who basically finds or gets introduced to this death note, a notebook where he can write down names and the people he writes down in the book, they die. And so it's kind of like sci-fi and uh, it should be really interesting and as you know with manga the art is always on point the art always inspires me to just want to draw like it makes me want to draw so yeah death note pick that up super sweet also in new york because i love picking up things in new york i picked up more like books and things in new york than i did actual clothing and in new york i picked up these cowboy bebop extended like story mangas and if you guys know cowboy bebop it's one of the kind of classic animes and i actually love it i'm actually watching the entire thing right now so i'm not going to read these yet these are just extra stories that you know the spike Faye, and, and jet go through and the gang go through um, while they're in, in in space 
And uh, I don't know, just something about Cowboy Bebop is the music is fantastic. I love like having good music. It's like, it's like jazzy. Like the music in this anime is like jazzy with a little bit of like classical rock and like, I don't know, it's just fire. Like it, they do a really good job. And then the animation is really, really perfect on this. So the outfits are on point as well. Like outfit inf inspiration is really great. So pick these up extremely excited about these boy extremely excited cowboy bebop next is this flcl omnibus i have no idea what this is about to be honest i saw it on line and i just picked it up and I'm, i just like books and manga so i don't even know what this is about i have no clue and i'm really excited to learn what it's about without any spoilers so pick this up and yeah just want to show you guys i don't know maybe if you I've heard about it you can say it's whether or not it's good or bad but i don't want any spoilers so so when it comes to books the last books that i want to show you guys is from a very famous movie called a silent voice and lauren actually gifted me this for my birthday which was back in september and this is a i'm not sure which came first i think the movie came first but these are basically the mangas of the story a silent voice one of the best anime films you can ever watch, in my opinion. It's gut-wrenching, it, it makes you sad a little bit, it's crazy how good it is. And I can only imagine how good the manga will be, so shout out to the lovely girlfriend on that. And this is like the complete box set, so I appreciate that. So, on my trip to New York, I feel like everything about this video is about my trip to New York, but I actually was able to pick up uh, a duffel bag, which I feel like I want to share with you guys when you're traveling or doing whatever. I don't know, just something that is something I use and I had a lot of value. I got a lot of value out of, and it's by one of my favorite sustainable brands, United by Blue. As you guys know, if you guys know, I've been kind of talking about United by Blue for a while now because of the products that they create. This is made entirely out of organic cotton, I believe, like ripstop cotton. It is a part of their workwear series, and so it's a duffel bag that has workwear, and I use this to take everything with me. I even have like socks in here that I left by accident, which is good that I checked this because now I can I found my socks. So <laughs> literally can't make this up. <laughs> but this duffel is really great. Um, pretty good size, great travel size. Has a ton of different pockets and compartments, especially here on the front side. I'll make sure to show B-roll of everything. Great, great, great quality duffel bag. And with United by Blue, the thing that I've kind of just been blessed enough to, to say that I can say this to you guys, but if you use my code, which I'll put on the screen, I believe it's Drew20, I believe, Drew J20 or Drew20, you get a little discount on checkout. So it's something that, you know, if you want to support a brand that once again, sustainable, doing great things, like they have a, their, their fall winter collection, I feel like is one of their best. And they do great job for women's wear, which if you have like a girl or someone who's a significant other that you want to look for items for, use the code. I also picked up the uh, this rucksack, which has yet to be used, but I will be using it. Part of their workwear series as well. Super, super nice, long strap on it. Really rugged once again, and just perfect for like, oh, you need to go to the coffee shop and like bring your laptop and maybe a few kind of writing utensils and a notebook and you can just use this in your set and it has like all the features that you want zips up kind of you can detach you can detach the the long strap and just use it as a handle if you want to all those features and more like i, I don't know united by blue always does a great job and they keep it sustainable which is what i like they, they keep it sustainable <laughs> So as I was editing this video, another package actually came in that I wanted to show you guys because it was such a nice and such a courtesy for the brand to send me this. If you guys know this G, you know we're talking about gardens and seeds. One of the best brands out of California right now, doing it big time. They're made in USA caps. Just unbelievable what they're able to accomplish and what they've been able to do over the last couple of years. I covered them a little while ago on the channel. and. They sent me a nice little happy birthday package, and I really, really appreciate that. Like, um, Marco and the team, thank you guys so much. So, like I said, we have the hat, like you can see right here. A pin, which earlier in my channel, I said that Gardens and Seed represented like Jordan or something like that. Like the flag logo represented Jordan, but they're all Filipino. So it represents the Philippines. Come on now, Drew. 
So I, I got mad love for all the Kuyas out there. Let's see if we can get the focus. All the Kuyas out there, man. Gave me this pin. This is like their insignia. And then they also sent over. You know I love some socks, man. Socks, everybody needs a ton of socks. And so they have these socks right here, which are indubiously great. Love these socks. They say Gardens and Seas on the front. And last but certainly not least, they also, did I say I love toe bags? Because your boy loves toe bags and I've been using my Gardens and Seas toe bag. Inspired me to make my own in a way. Um, look at that. Unbelievably beautiful. Love what Gardens and Seeds does. They just, they just, man, they, they always do a good job with their products. They have, they have great, great people behind the brand. And I'm always very so impressed by everything they do. They just had a, I think they just did something with StockX as well, which is incredible. So I can't say thank you enough. It was, it was a birthday present to me and uh, you guys are unbelievable. And if you're ever in need of supporting a brand, once again, that's a little bit more low key, definitely support them, Gardens and Seeds. They got that Filipino, Filipino love to them. So I absolutely love that about them. I cannot wait to uh, indulge in these products. Thank you guys so much. Back to the post vid vid, or let's go to the post vid vid. This is a little bit impromptu. I changed my whole outfit, changed everything up for you guys, but um, I had to show you guys this because it's like, it's part of the pickups, even though technically today is, the day I'm recording this is October, but I didn't wanna have to wait a whole month to show this off. This is just unbelievably kind of them. And that is today's and this video's pickups video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video you enjoyed me showcasing la lovely you enjoyed showcasing the items i'm very very excited about the footwear and everything i'm excited about everything really and i feel very very fortunate and blessed to be in the position that i'm in as always tell me what you guys thought about the video did you like it did you not like it um was it a little bit too long or too wordy uh, all the items will be linked down in the description if you ever come to denver Hit up La Lovely, like I said, and their, their information will be in the description as well. There's a lot of fun videos that are going to be created in the month of October, and this is a great start. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2021, so that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Abianto, Avida Se. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting my other ones. I'm forgetting. Hasta luego. Uh, Jumpa Lagi. <laughs> All the languages to say, see you soon, and we'll see you soon, you guys. Have a blessed rest of your day for real. You made it to the post vid vid. You're not like the 99% of other people who clicked off this video. It's just me and you. We're having a conversation now. And I appreciate you for making it this far. There's one fist bump, there's another one. Shout out to you. Um, this video was super fun. My voice, I'm losing my voice because I've I never talk this much and I never had so many shoes in my life. <laughs> it's kind of unbelievable, but I want to say thank you guys so much for all your support. It's been an unbelievable first year on YouTube and I can't say thank you enough to everybody who's liked videos, watched videos, commented, followed, all those things. You guys are literally making a dream come true for me and I can't say thank you enough. Hopefully I can find out a way to give back. Um, to you guys and just to people in general. I know I had mentioned in the other video I wanted to create a discord If someone wants to comment or maybe DM me the best way to do that um, You know, I think I want, I want it to be very like Community oriented. I want things to be done really well on the discord So if there's maybe somebody who will be a moderator for it or something like that That'd be fantastic because your boys got the podcast the brand uh, the YouTube channel the TikToks and everything else in between, Instagram and all these other things. So it, it, I'm finding that my time, my, my personal time is dwindling down. And I'm just becoming this work machine, which for me, like I love this. I actually love it. So there's nothing wrong with it um, in, that, in that capacity. But anyways, who wants to be chairman of the Discord? <laughs> uh. What else are you guys looking to pick up for the fall time? The lighting in the room is a little bit different because it's literally cloudy almost every day and has been and it's getting colder and I have to wear this knit sweater because it's cold 
Are you guys looking to pick up like some jackets? Should I make another suggestions video? I have a ton of video ideas that I want to do. Um, but like, what are you guys picking up? And even more importantly than that, how are you, how are you doing today? Are you doing okay? Like, how was school? Is fall break coming up? If you have fall break, or if you're in the southern hemisphere, is spring break coming up? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if you're in the southern hemisphere, comment down below. Like, that would be insane to know how many people are actually in different seasonalities because the world is so big. Like, sometimes we forget, like, the country that we live in is not the only country. So, but hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoy making these videos. I'll see you guys next time, man. I'll see you next time, brother. Fist bump it out, man. It's, it's good to see you, bro. <laughs> Peace.